So what is D-Trace? D-Trace is uh, instrumentation engine, dynamic instrumentation engine for, uh, for Solaris. It was made by the Brian Cantrell, Mike Shapiro and Adam Leventhal in 2005. And then it was introduced uh, to some BSD systems uh, like FreeBSD and NetBSD. And along with it, it was uh, then added to ISX, which is loosely based on the FreeBSD. Uh, particularly for OSX, it was included in 2007 in 2.5 version of OSX, codenamed Leopard. And you, well, any developer might know D-Trace from the instrument, instruments tool for OSX. Uh, stability was the core assumption for D-Trace uh, because the this en engine was uh, <laughs> was to be to included into the Solaris, and Solaris is for servers. So you could you can't actually break the system because well that would be not very good. And the second one was the no overhead. So the applications that are not traced need to work exactly. Uh, like they would work if D-Trace was not uh, present at the system at all. And they actually achieved that. However, uh, in order to do so, they needed to uh, remove some parts, some interesting parts from the D-language. And that's why I say that it's kind of retarded debugger slash DBI engine, because you can't do everything with D-Trace. For some things, you actually need to use uh, any any sort of a debugger or or actual DBI engine, for example, Pintool or Dynamario. So this is a D-Trace mascot. Nice, nice. Uh, and that's how the basic D script looks like. So you have a provider uh, which uh, generally provides you with some vague functionality. Then you have, a, for example, PID. Then you have a module. Uh, so for PID, you could actually trace some particular code chunks inside of a dynamic library. And that would go for module. Then function, well, this is self-explanatory. And name, which, is, uh, which stands for the semantic meaning. So for example, if you have a, some kind of a function, then name could be, for example, entry and return. So for every entry of this function, uh, make some actions that are defined. Uh, and uh, one more thing about functions. As you may probably know, uh, you could deduce that, that you actually need to have, uh, you can't have striped binaries, so you need to have symbols in your binaries. I mean, kind of. Then you have a predicate, which is the only form of uh, if, if statements in the D, and you have actions. So all that you can also run as a one-liner from the command line. So the other one is, is just a one-liner, but basically does the same. So yeah, that's how it looks like. So for example, here you have a D-Trace uh, provider and uh, two uh, fields are just left out, module and function, and you have a begin. So begin would fire for the entry point of the D-Trace script itself. So for example, if you want to make uh, some kind of a formatting, then you can do that by a D-Trace begin and also D-Trace end if you want to do something at the end of the D-Trace script. So the architecture looks like this. Uh, you have a scripts or one-liners that go to D-Trace command, which is uh, basically the D-Trace consumer. You could technically code your own consumer, for example, in Python. And uh, that would be Python binding, bindings. 
and uh, that makes the DIF, which is the no, no, that actually parses <laughs> in the, the script. The DIF is made by libdtrace, which is the still in user space, but it sends the objects into the kernel land for dtrace driver to actually uh, schedule stuff for the dtrace providers. Yeah. And as a bonus, you have something uh, like USDTs, which are user level statically defined tracing. Basically, you can make uh, some static points in your own programs or in programs of other people and, uh, and put probes statically into the code. And this actually is quite interesting uh, because, uh, for example, if you have a J JavaScript provider, which is JS, then uh, people from Mozilla uh, introduced DTrace USDTs into, into Mozilla Firefox, uh, and you could peek into the internals of the JavaScript uh, via DTrace, and it would be enhanced even more if you would uh, do that via USDT than if you wouldn't have USDT at all and you would just try to uh, go dynamically via bare D-trace. And that's because uh, you wouldn't have the underlying meaning. Okay, so that's a D language. Basically, D is like C, so if you know C, then D will be easy to learn. Data types, so basically like C, anyone knows that. Uh, one important part is that you can, the reference pointers, and that means that you can walk structure chains, and you can cast things. But you can cast things in C and the reference also, so. Yep, and types of scalars, uh, types are scalars, strings, arrays, and associative arrays. Scalars are usual just values. Strings, that is kind of different than C because, well, it's more like uh, Python strings or, or, or whatever higher level language. Uh, then you have arrays, which are like C, and then you have associative arrays that are not like C because you use tuples inside of them. And uh, you have a kind of different scope than in C, and you, you use variables in a different way, as, can, as you can see. So if you want to have a global variable, then you just use name, but without any type. If you want to have closed locals, then you use this arrow foo. If you want to have thread locals, then you use self arrow bar. And if you want to reference to external variables, you can do that, do that by backtick. And yeah, as an example, you can actually uh, go for the kernel variables. Interesting built-ins. So the D-trace, of course, uh, th they needed to introduce some kind of a functionality. That, that, that you can use some, some kind of uh, additional data. And that comes in the form of uh, built-ins. So you have uh, like three pointers to, to typical structures for, for processes and threads in Unix systems. So you can reference some interesting values inside of structures, those structures. So those are CARPS info, which is for processes, Carl Vupay's info, which is kind of for lightweight processes, and car thread, which is current thread, uh, which, are, which is for threads. Then you have a color. Uh, well, color is just a function that calls the, fun uh, the, 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 the function that you're actually probing. You can reference uh, arguments, uh, exec names, PIDs. PPIDs are parent pro uh, process IDs. Uh, you can use timestamps and, interesting, part is that you can actually dump the registers, but you cannot modify them. And uh, actually, ah, okay, I have this example later in the slide, so okay. Uh, operators, well, these are exactly like C, apart from 
struct uh, apart from strings and XORs. As you can see, for logical XOR, R, you have double dashes. No, um, yeah, birds. And for bitwise, you have just one. So for bitwise, is it is normal. You don't have loops and you don't have ifs uh, because, as I stated earlier, uh, you actually cannot have them from the assumptions. Because if you would have uh, loops or ifs, then you could do uh, never-ending loops or, or, or ifs. So that would be very bad for a production system. However, there are reserved keywords inside of D-Trace. So you have uh, keywords for uh, do while, while, fors, gotos, ifs, else's, but they didn't actually implement that, or at least they didn't do that for, for public. Actions and subroutines, these are also kind of built-ins in, into the D-Trace. So you can uh, dump the stack. Use stack is for user mode, because in D-Trace, when you're tracing any, uh, any application, you do that from inside of the kernel, and uh, if it's in the user mode, then you would have different stacks for the actual D-Trace probe, which is in kernel land, and different stack for the application that you want to have stack for. So then you would use user stack. Uh, TraceMem is for tracing uh, general pointers, so you can trace memory. Alloca allocations, uh, B copies are, well, uh, for internal usage of things. Then you have copy in, copy inst, and copy into. As I said just a second ago, uh, the D-trace is in the kernel. So if you want to have something from user mode, for example, you want to have a string uh, that is uh, pointed by the argument, then you need to somehow copy it into the kernel, and you would do that via copy in. I have that in the example, so I will point that out later. And uh, message sizes and string lengths, well, that kind of relates to allocs and B copies. Then you have destructive for specific processes. Uh, these are only available if you switch the pragma destructive. Uh, which are stop, race, copy out, and system. Stop and race are kind of self-explanatory. You can stop processes and <coughs> raise some signal, for example, nine, which is uh, kill. Uh, and copy out, copy out string is uh, actually destructive because you can mangle the memory. So this actually was used by Nemo in, in, in his examples, I will provide the reference later, uh, when, where he, on x86, uh, when you call functions, you usually do that via std call or cd echo. Not you, you, do, you don't usually you do that via fast call. So you can actually change the things that are on the stack via copy out instruction. So you could, uh, for example, tamper with, uh, with the output of some applications. For, X, uh, for X64, you could do that. Probably I didn't test that. You could do that if the argument is the pointer. So uh, because on X64, the first sex arguments are passed via registers. So you can't modify the register. But if the argument is a pointer, then you can dereference that pointer and then mangle with the memory pointed by the pointer. And system execs the, well, it's just like in C. It execs the application, uh, provided string for the application. And uh, for, for the whole systems are also destructive. Breakpoint, panic, and chill. Uh, breakpoint say, sets the breakpoint, and uh, then it waits for the kernel debugger. So you shouldn't do that if you don't have a kernel debugger. Uh, turned on, and panic, well, it panics the kernel. And chill is also interesting for race conditions, because you can, uh, when you're analyzing race condition, then you can put some chills 
inside of the kernel, and uh, well, you will win races more often than not. So it's good for uh, for analyzing uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, and now we're going into providers. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, I, I usually point only the interesting ones. So if you see the uh, ellipses, then there are more and you should check them. But f for more interesting ones are like Syscall, PID, Object C, FBT and PROC. Syscall, you can trace the, any Syscall on the system. For PID, you can trace, uh, well, any process. For Object C, this is kind of Apple specific. Uh, you can go into the man uh, D-trace and you can read about uh, object, uh, object C provider. FBT stands for Function Boundary Tracing and is used uh, to actually any function inside of the kernel. So you can pick into the kernel via FBT and it's quite interesting. And PROC, well, I actually used PROC only once, uh, and I've seen it uh, in a very interesting usage, uh, which was done a couple of weeks ago for launch D uh, vulnerability analysis, because the guy had a kernel vulnerability, but the Apple, as usual, didn't release the kernel, kernel, <laughs> kernel uh, with debug symbols, yep and he couldn't actually connect, and uh, he wanted to know uh, where the crash is happening. So he used the proc, because uh, at, with proc you can say, say that, yeah, okay, at the point of the crash for some pro process, uh, dump the, for example, stack and registers. And he did that, it made things simpler. This is the output uh, well, I, I will run through this. So basically, you are listing the, uh, all the providers on the system via dtrace-l. Uh, then awk is used to focus only on the uh, second column. Then I'm grabbing for the provider that I want to show, for example, uh, PID, and then I count it. So for PID, you have zero because I didn't trace anything. But for Syscalls, you have uh, 980. And well, FBT kind of stands out with 100,000. So yeah, it's, it's pretty rich. Uh, past work. Black Hat 2008. Uh, Tiller and David introduced framework retrace, uh, where they showed some appliances of dtrace into the vulnerability research, but it was kind of pretty Pretty simple. They just uh, caught some stack-based buffer overflows and some basic heap stuff. And then Nemo at Infiltrate 2013, he, on the other hand, presented uh, rootkit-like uh, capabilities uh, possible with D-Trace. Uh, not, very, not, not very useful. I wouldn't do anything, uh, anything like that with D-Trace because it misses the point. You can actually just, you know, turn the D-trace off. Uh, but he presented a lot of uh, interesting one-liners and ideas, and they're worth checking out. And similar projects, if you happen to be on Linux, then you can use SystemTap, which is very similar. And uh, actually, it's uh, kind of semi-compatible with, uh, with the semantics of D-Trace because Red Hat wanted to do that in this way. For interesting usage case, you can uh, reference to, the, uh, to our blog post. And Detours, uh, this was uh, kind of started before D-Trace or in, in the same years, in the past decade. Well, 90s. Uh, and uh, this is actually funny because uh, if you've reversed any DLLs from Microsoft, you've probably seen the MOF EDI EDI instruction in the function prolog. This is actually hot part for the, for the detours. So it does introduce 
overhead, but it's very slight. You can read about MOF EDI EDI at the provided link. So, use it. I will first uh, run through some one-liners, then I will run through some scripts. So, this one uh, just shows you the number of syscalls that we uh, executed on the behalf of the PID. The PID in this example is a preview application on OSX that run uh, some test PNG. So you could, you could see how many syscalls were executed. This is kind of interesting if you want to see uh, if you seek for any particular syscall. Not very interesting in general case. Or maybe if you're profiling the code, then, then it is interesting. The second one-liner uh, tells us... Ah, okay. Uh, I will go back to this one. Uh, as you can see, I've left out the module and, and actual function. So I just put probe on any syscall that is in the system. And here, I only put uh, entry on the read syscall. That's why, that's why I only catch read, and I read the third argument, which is arc2, because we count from 0 in C, and I sum on that. So the third argument is actually how many bytes the, the process uh, was uh, reading in that particular read function. Uh, this also is kind of not very uh, informative in a general sense. Maybe if you want to analyze what, the, what exactly does the application is doing, then uh, maybe it would be kind of interesting. Or, or if you have, a, again, profiling the application, then you can pinpoint the bottlenecks. So why does it reading like one million bytes at, at this function? It, it shouldn't do that. And also, and I actually use that in my work a couple of times, uh, you can trace any execution on the, uh, on the system. In this example, I trace the POSIX spawn, which is used on OSX, contrary to the usual execv. If you will trace only execv, then you will have kind of Apple-specific uh, code chunks for, uh, well, whole applications that, <laughs> that uh, does icon stuff, and you wouldn't catch that, so you actually need to put the props on POSIX spawn, uh, along with the timestamps. So it's interesting because Apple doesn't always is, uh, does things straight, so it, seems, it is interesting what exactly is happening in your system. You might be surprised. And for some more one-liners, you can either reference the provided link or just Google for them. There, there is really shitloads of resources on that, so no problem with, uh, with finding this. And for scripts, well, scripts uh, are kind of more logical or strateg strategical approach, so uh, you, if you want to develop a script, then you need to have an actual idea what do you want to do. So I will present the tracking input, memory allocation snooping, and heat tracing. Those are like uh, general ideas that I wanted to, uh, to study, and D-Trace uh, was helpful with that. So uh, for tracking inf input, I've covered this on my blog a couple of weeks ago for read, but uh, usually when, you, when the application is processing the input, uh, you wouldn't just read the big file each, each time that you want to do something with it. You would usually m memory map, map it and then reference the, that memory. It's, it, it's faster. So uh, I did that for MMAP, and uh, interesting problem arose in the uh, OSX and D-Trace, particularly. 
Uh, and of course, uh, you can track any input. So uh, the same idea can be done for the network input to implement basic sniffer capabilities. So uh, I will run through each D-trace chunk. So at the end, if you would uh, glue every chunk, then you would have a working script. So in the begin, I uh, introduced two global uh, arrays in which I will be uh, tracking the file descriptors and uh, mmap pointers. Then for uh, open, I'm starting to uh, put two probes on entry and return because on entry, I want to have uh, the arguments that were provided uh, to open and on return, I want to have a return value, which is a file des descriptor. I'm defining two uh, thread local variables in the entry. So I'm, I'm saving the file name, which, which isn't uh, required. And the other one is actually required because you want to have uh, some kind of a flag that you actually went into the, 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 the open, which you will use as a predicate in the, in the return uh, probe. So I'm using this as a predicate. Then I'm saving uh, the returned file descriptor. Uh, in, I'm putting this into an array, but uh, as you can see, I'm putting this in as an index. So I'm just saying, yeah, I have uh, some kind of uh, file descriptor, for example, uh, 100, and I'm setting it to one, so it is used. So I can later check that this file descriptor is actually used. Uh, and I'm freeing the used variables self f name and open ok because if you if you uh, make the variable zero then you kind of delete delete it uh, so that's that for open for mmap where i actually use the tract fd uh, as a predicate again because uh, yeah, you probably don't know arguments for mmap, but the fifth argument is the file des descriptor. So I'm checking if the tract of the array of this uh, file descriptor is flagged as open. And if it is, then I'm making uh, some uh, thread local variables that I will use in the return. Then I'm checking if any of, it, uh, any of the thread local variables are set and because that would also could be just uh, MFD, not MSZ. And I'm actually do some longing and use stacking in the, uh, open the re return. However, uh, in my read uh, example, I actually pick into the mem memory inside of the read return. However, on MMAP return, I cannot do that. Uh, and that was strange to me. Apparently, with D-Trace, you cannot pick into the memory that wasn't touched by the process. So even though mmap, well, the memory was actually touched because it, it was mapped, uh, the process itself didn't touch it yet, so the D-Trace can't dump it, even though the pointer is valid. So I'm checking the memory when I'm unmapping the, the mapped memory. So you check the memory via tracemem, then I copy in the, the, the pointer that I want to check, the reference. So I'm, uh, I'm doing the copy in because you need to have the chunk from the user mode into the kernel mode. And then from this uh, chunk, you actually trace the memory, which is kind of not, not very elegant way, but it how, it's how it works. So, yeah, and then I'm just uh, freeing the variables. And on open the close, I'm freeing the tract of D, but you don't need to actually do that. Uh, for memory, memory allocation snooping, 
Uh, I wanted to have a simple tool that imitates output of L-Trace for mem memory allocations. Uh, and end goal was to use it for uh, VLOC, which actually succeeded. However, the idea can be also re-implemented to make heap layout analysis, or snooping into custom memory allocators, or tracking kernel memory allocations. So for heap layout anal analysis, uh, usually when you're exploiting some vulnerability these days, uh, you have an ISLR, you have a bunch of other things that try to stop you. So uh, you might not get 100% reliability, and then you want to know well, okay, so how much reliability I do have? And yeah, you can do that with the debugger, but everyone knows that LLDB sucks. So you can also use DTrace for that. So yeah, basic uh, workflow would look like this. You would, uh, in case of the heap overflow, you would just uh, play with the heap in the, in the internal applications. So for example, in browser, you would use JavaScript, and then you would see how many times uh, you have an object that you want to have at the address that you want to have it. Well, for browsers, it's kind of different, different game, but you could do that for any other applications that are not as easy to manipulate the heap as in it is in the browsers. And then you actually need to use some kind of a functionality to, to, uh, to research the, uh, the reliability, well, the, the odds that you have with your objects. So this looks like uh, that. I'm just uh, putting some props on, uh, on each allocation uh, functions. So for libc, the, the, these are malloc, malloc, valloc, calloc, realloc, and realloc f. Which, uh, so I put all of them into the slides, but they are just uh, for the sake of the completeness. So I'm, I'm using the entry and return, because on entry I have the requested size, and on return I have actually uh, the, the memory pointer. So I need to have two probes for each function. And uh, this actually is interesting. <laughs> well, why do they have realloc f when they do have realloc? Because apparently realloc f is uh, FreeBSD, uh, FreeBSD functionality uh, and does OSX, uh, which frees the source buffer when it fails. So if you want to realloc some buffer and the reallocation fails, then realloc will not free the source buffer. It will just say, no, no, you, you, you will not have new, new chunks of memory. Uh, but realloc f will also free the source buffer, which is interesting. And for free, you just, uh, for the, uh, also for the sake of completeness, I just uh, did that with void because l -trace actually use the void, but the free function doesn't return any, uh, anything. So yeah, it's basically void in C. But it's void, it's not string. Uh, so if you run it uh, for bin ls, you have something like this in, in, in my catalog, in my home directory. And you can pipe it to vlog and get something like this. So you have a nice visu visualization of the, for, for each memory allocation. This is actually a work in progress because uh, when I was developing the, the script, some problems arose, and uh, I'm still discussing it with, uh, with the VLOC creators, but uh, the alpha version is, is available on my GitHub if you want to check that out. Also, uh, <laughs> yeah, the interesting part is, uh, is uh, are the memory allocation functions on OSX are thread uh, safe or not? Well, they are thread safe, but, uh, but I needed to do some testing to, to actually know that. And uh, last idea that I want 
to implement is heat tracing. So it's kind of like uh, code coverage, but the end goal is different. So in code coverage, uh, you're tracing the uh, instructions that will heat inside of the application with the specific input. However, you do that because you want to you want to have a small pool of files for your fuzzing operation as possible. However, with heat tracing, I want to know which particular functions and later uh, which particular uh, code lines will hit when I run specific input. So basically, you could do that with uh, IDA's, uh, well, if you're doing that for IDA, IDA have something like Mac server. But I, have, I had a problem with Mac servers, so I uh, implemented this as a D-trace script, but it's not yet, uh, it's not yet public. It's, in, uh, it, it's very similar to the idea from the DV, DV Labs guys. So you can reference their blog, and the idea is uh, quite well covered there. So, ah, yeah. I didn't mention that. So I, to, uh, I want to have this information to actually colorize the graph, but you don't need to colorize graph. Mm -hmm. And future work. More, color, more kernel work, more USDT work. Uh, I, would, uh, I want to see something like this for V8. For, yeah, V8 is uh, JavaScript engine for Chrome. Uh, so I would like to see... Uh, Similar tool uh, that is for uh, Mozilla Firefox for Chrome, or maybe even for Safari. Uh, Python-based D-Trace consumer, which would be Python bindings. There, are, there is something like uh, Ra Ruby bindings for D-Trace, but I don't code in, in Ruby, so I didn't use that. Uh, I'm open to ideas, so you can mail me if you have something in mind. Yeah, and that would be it. References are uh, links, so you can just uh, check them out uh, later. Any questions? Yeah. How safe are, how safe are these copy in and copy out functions of the kernel space? Because, I mean, you know, one could potentially write a malicious D-trace script to just basically crash everything. Yeah, uh, that's why uh, when you're doing the copy out, this, is, uh, this isn't safe. So you need to actually uh, define the pragma, uh, which stands for uh, pragma D destructive, to be able to do that. And D-trace can be launched only by root. So as root, you should know that uh, you should know what you're doing, but then again, you need to explicitly state that you want to have a destructive, uh, that you want to perform destructive operation. However, uh, with the copy in, these are 100% uh, safe because they're just basically you're stating that you want to have some memory that is in the user space, and I want to see what that memory is. So, the, so you need to use copy in because D-trace. Uh, references that memory, it copies, it copies it into its own internal buffers, and then it will present it to you, for example, for trace mem. So uh, it's copy out is destructive, copy, copy ins are 100% safe. Um. Hello, so my question is about Mac OS. Uh, Apple has that nice feature that when you call ptrace with ptrace deny attach, uh, it disables both P future ptrace calls for, from other processes, but I think it also disables uh, dtrace. Is there any way other than replacing the kernel extension to m make it possible to enable it? Uh, yeah, I, I, ha I have this on my to, to do to-do list, but you, technically you, you shouldn't be able to, uh, as you stated, you, you might be able to do that, but yeah, I didn't test that, if, uh, and I have that on my to-do list. If you do that for uh, the some process, uh, 
yeah, because iTunes have that. So if you would want to trace iTunes, you probably wouldn't be able to do that via PID provider because it's, uh, it, it is turned off. So no, you wouldn't be able to change that via D-Trace because uh, you would also not be able to D-Trace that application as far as I re uh, recall. But I will double check that and I have that on my to-do list. Thanks. Any other questions? Cool. So that concludes my talk. <laughs>